achievements of sinners, Jesus can save. As he has promised, so will he do. All sinners hear him, trust in his word. Then he will pass, we will pass over you. Yes, when I, when I yes, see the blood, see the blood. Oh, when I, when I yes, see the blood, see the blood. Yes, when I, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Jesus said, when I, when I yes, see the blood, see the blood. Yes, when I, when I yes, see the blood, see the blood. Yes, when I, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Oh, great compassion, oh, powerless love, oh, loving kindness. Faithful and true, by peace and shelter under the blood, then he will pass, will pass over you. That's when I, when I see the blood, see the blood. That's when I, when I see the blood, see the blood. Jesus said, when I, when I see the blood, I will pass. The blood. It's when I, when I see the blood, see the blood. It's when I, when I see the blood, see the blood. It's when I, when I see the blood. I will pass, I will pass over you. Judgment is coming, all will be there. Who has rejected? Who has refused? All sinners hate them. Let Jesus in, then I will pass, I will pass over you. Yes, when I, when I, yes, see the blood, see the blood. Yes, when I, when I, yes, see the blood, see the blood. He said, when I, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Yes, when I. The blood. See the blood. That's when I, when I, I see the blood. See the blood. That's when I, when I see the blood. I will pass. I will pass over you. Yes, when I, when I see the blood. See the blood. That's when I, when I see the blood. See the blood. That's when. Who had refused all sinner taste and let Jesus in? Then I will pass, I will pass over you. It's when I, when I, let see the blood, see the blood. It's when I, when I, see the blood, see the blood. It's when I, when I, let see the blood. I will pass. See the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight I thank God that I have had the blood of Jesus. Amen. Sprinkled over my life. Hallelujah. When I see the blood, 
I will pass, I will pass over you. Yes, when I, when I yes, see the blood, see the blood. Yes, when I, when I yes, see the blood, yes, when I, I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Yes, when I, when I yes, see the blood, see the blood. Yes, when I. But when I, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross, died for the sinner, paid all his dues. All who receive him need never fear. Cause he will pass, we will pass over you when I when I see the blood, see the blood, when I see the blood, see the blood, and when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the blood has been applied. Amen to our lives. Hallelujah. 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 We can sing of his love. Hallelujah. Forever. Hallelujah. my heart and let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth and I will daily lift my hands I will always sing of where your love came down and I could sing of your love forever and I could sing of your love forever and I could sing of your love forever. And I could sing of your love forever. Over the mountain, cherish see your river up with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands. I will always sing of when your love came down. And I could sing of your love forever. 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 And though I feel like dancing, it's foolishness I know. But when the world has seen the light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. And I could sing of your love forever. 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 And I 
I could sing of your love forever. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. Amen. Are you thankful for the blood of the Lamb tonight? Amen. Are you thankful that He loves you when you were unlovable? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to the key of B flat for me. Amen. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Will of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. For there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Will of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. Now would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. In the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. you be free from the burden of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power. Oh, get the devil a black eye and see you. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the name. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. Amen. They were singing that song about seeing the blood. It made me think about the children of Israel. Obviously, when they were in uh, Egypt's bondage, when they were there and the, the plagues came through and then the death angel came over, they were given instruction, if you'll take it and you'll apply that, that blood to the two door po uh, to the two door post uh, and across the lintel, then when the death angel comes, uh, he will pass over your home. Amen? And I'm thankful tonight I don't have to physically go apply blood to the door post and lintels of my home, but the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied uh, to the lintels and the door post of my life and if it was not for the blood of Jesus I would be in a mess tonight amen hallelujah they can take the blood out if they want to they can call it something else. They can try to make it seeker sensitive friendly to those around them. But he still died on Calvary. It was still a gruesome event. It was still a debt that he did not owe, that I owed. It should have been you and I there on the cross. But he paid it. And I'm glad the blood's been applied to my life tonight. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. Hallelujah. We're here. We might as well just have church. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Kids only got about one more day or two for spring break. You can be seated. And, and uh, so uh, they're not going to go to bed tonight early anyhow, so you might as well just drag them through the altar. Amen. Let them get a good dose of Jesus before they leave tonight. What a joy it is to be with you on Wednesday night. And I trust that you've had a great week in the Lord and that you have uh, uh, shared the love of Jesus, that you've been a, a vessel of honor for Him, that you've been a, a mouthpiece for Him, that you've just loved on folks. I'm just happy to be alive tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Feel a little bit better than I did. I had a good time Sunday night around here too, though, but physically feel a little bit better tonight after uh, having a day or two of rest at the home, and so thank you for that. And we're going to have some of our students testify here in just a moment. Uh, they don't know who which ones. All they know is be ready. If you are called, you better be ready to speak. And I heard some of them kind of slouched down, and uh, so probably the ones that make the most physical movements right about now will be the ones I call. So I'm watching. See one's leaving right now. Look at that. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, she's not. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't forget about tomorrow night. It is our one night revival with the shepherds. Our daughter campus will be coming with us tomorrow night. Some of them are here tonight. And uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow night, the shepherds. How many of you have never heard the shepherds before? You will not want to miss tomorrow night. How many of you remember Quint Shepherd from a long, long time ago? Some of you go back a long time. So I know he will be delighted to see you here tomorrow night. And uh, we don't pull these Wednesday, Thursday night things too often. But as far as our church, now we have a team that does it every week, and uh, but not in our, our sanctuary. So uh, don't let the Lord down, first of all, tomorrow night. Don't let Pastor down. If you don't like me, don't let Sister Wendy down tomorrow night. Amen. I know you love her. I mean, you, 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 you feel sorry for her because she has to live with me. So come here tomorrow night, support the Lord and support the shepherds and love on Sister Wendy. And, and uh, I'll just be here to do whatever pastors do tomorrow night. 7 o'clock, a great time in the Lord, expecting the Lord just to, to bless us and, and be with us tomorrow night. And then the events of the weekend. Uh, don't forget about service on Sunday, missions uh, fundraiser yard sale on Saturday. Just looking forward to what God has. I'm looking forward to preaching Sunday. And it's been a week or so since I've been in the pulpit So uh, on a Sunday. So uh, just Pray hard for me that I'll get it all out Sunday morning and Sunday night. I won't keep you too long. Amen. So uh, looking forward to being in the house of the Lord on Sunday. Let me share with you, I announced uh, or asked for your prayer Sunday night at the close of service for um, the Church of God Association of Christian Schools, on which I sit as a board member. We had a humongous, very important vote yesterday. Um, I've been involved with CJAX for about five years now, and we've been trying to get to this level, grow up to this level for many years, and um, I was waiting yesterday for the text uh, for from Lola Brewer, you know her and her husband do the Heart of Florida, but Sister Brewer duels as our executive director, and we were scheduled to be on the agenda at 1.30 yesterday afternoon, so we knew it would be after lunch, but about 11.55, I think it was, she sent the text, it was one word, it was three letters, it was Y-E-S. We received the official accreditation vote from the Fan Association yesterday, and you say, what does that mean at a high level for the association and for our school? It means a lot. It means that we have grown into be somebody. We are now uh, one of 14 organizations that have been accredited uh, by fans, which is the Florida Association of Academic Non-Public Schools. Um, when you go to their website, you'll see places like the Assembly of God's flocks will be there. The Catholic schools are, associate, are, are accredited by these people. Uh, so other larger, denom uh, larger Christian groups in Florida are. This is a huge step for us, and uh, they have went through everything that we have. And they, uh, Rebecca's been involved a little bit of it behind the scenes, working with our website. And so we have grown up to that finally, praise the Lord. And the benefit to our local church, this is what I've been waiting for, because um, if you're familiar with Florida law, you know that VPK is a very big thing. That is voluntary pre-K for those students that turn four by September the 1st. They get 540 hours of basically state paid instruction. And um, I confirmed this last night late before I made a public statement today. And um, we will be able, because of our association and accreditation with CJAX, and now that they're accredited through this organization, we'll be able to offer VPK next year for all of our students that are turning four by September the 1st. And, uh, you know, you five-year-old, you go to kindergarten, but four-year-old, you go to VPK. And uh, if it all works out, that basically will be free to those parents that have four-year-olds by September the 1st. Three hours a day is what it equals out to be. And the state pays for that for you, and we're able to do that. I, that's all I know tonight. That's all I know. That's all I know. I, I know that... 
It's a lot of work. Somebody said, have you looked into it? I said, nope, I'm not looking into it until I get a yes vote. There's no reason to worry with it until I get a yes vote. We got a yes vote yesterday. And so um, I sent Lola an email. I went, so this means we can do this next year. She says, yes, that gives you something else to work on between now and then. So uh, Rebecca will be busy in the coming days. And, and um, I will be uh, looking probably for a VPK teacher for next year. And, and we've already got a few leads on that. It's uh, have to be certified in VPK. And so just pray for us. And if you know anybody that has students that will be four years old by September the 1st, they can't be five yet and they can't be three. They've got to be four by September the 1st. Uh, talk to them about a state program and, um, and uh, we get the love on them and, and be a light to them. Can you say amen about that? Amen. All right, let's uh, have a few students testify tonight. And uh, you, you, you don't get long. I'm on time, okay? You get a minute. A minute. Now, a minute will sound like an eternity when you're up here, okay? But if you get long-winded, I'm going to have you sit down. Now, you're not preaching tonight, okay? Uh, you'll get a turn to preach some other time. All right. Cherith, where are you at? Always start with the preacher's kids. Um, so, SEYC was very good. Um, we went, of course, Friday night, Saturday morning, and Saturday night, but Saturday morning... Um, the Holy Ghost, there wasn't, there was a guy that got up and did a devotional, but he started preaching, really. And, um, the Holy Ghost took over, and the guy that was supposed to preach didn't end up preaching. And I was sitting there, they're having a little PK thing, where all the PKs sat, sat, um, like at the front of the church. And I was sitting there along with Caleb and Rebecca and Maddie and all the other PKs. Um, and I was sitting there, and they gave an altar call. Um, the guy that was doing it, and um, he was talking about um, being crippled. He told a story about how this boy was being, how this boy was crippled, and that he got healed, and that the Satan can cripple you and all that. But that's not really, I mean, that ministered to me and everything. But I seen all my um, people go down to the altars, and I kind of just stayed back. Um, I stayed back for a few minutes, and then I found myself a place to pray. Um, it wasn't in the altars. I didn't really, I didn't go to the altars. It ain't just because I didn't want to. I just didn't. And so I found a place to pray right there where I was sitting. And um, the Lord ministered to me. Um, the devil's been on my mind, and he's been telling me that I wasn't, I'm not, I ain't going to make it, you know. That I ain't going to make it to heaven. And it just, it bothers me, of course. Um but, you know, people started praying for me. It wasn't my youth group. It wasn't my church members. It wasn't my family. It was random people. That I don't even know their names. I still don't know their names. But the Lord spoke to me, and he told me that I could make it. By the grace of God, I can make it. And I am so thankful thankful for what he's done for me in my life and I'm so glad that the Lord encouraged me and that he told me that I can make it and I felt him so strong that time sitting praying in that prayer it was in a chair or on my knees at a chair praying I felt him I heard him speak to me that he has a plan for me and that he's going to do great things for me and I'm so so thankful She used two minutes. Amen. All right. Who's next? Nika, come testify. Amen. I'll meet you down here on the main floor. Let's go. Come on. You do have one. I was there with you, girl. Some of these kids are not ready to get up and testify. they got to get out of that, don't they, church? Amen. All right. Natty, come testify. I know she'll come. She better come. Amen. Matt, Nika, get ready. You're next. hard to follow up after um I was struggling with anxiety for a while and <laughs> one of the services they were talking about being crippled like Sheriff said and I kept like the enemy kept beating me up about it saying um you're not I'm going through things in my school and saying that you're not going to make it through that and I doubted him and there was a lady that testified who went through the same things I went to and she, God delivered her and I sat in my seat and people and the devil kept speaking to me saying um, she, God can't deliver you from that but and then God came on me and said if I delivered her then I can deliver you and I, 
went to the altar and I got delivered from that. But Monday morning I got up and I was stirring up from anxiety about some things. And they um got I mean the devil was like on me. <laughs> and Tuesday I got up and a peace came over me saying victory is going to come for you this week. And today I saw that in my class. God delivered me from some of the things that were happening. And he helped me through it. So, I mean, I'm a living example that if God can deliver me from something, he can deliver you from it. Hallelujah. Nicholas, you want to testify, buddy? No, some of my young guys went this weekend. So. No, I'm not going to make you. Okay, Mika, you ready? All right, I'm coming back to you. Be ready. All right, Allie, stand and testify. Well, I'm going to go along with what the other girls said. They were talking about how we're being crippled. And same thing with them. Satan's been really aggravating me, telling me that I'm not good enough. I can't make it. I, I, I'm not worth it. I'm not loved. And, you know, no matter what you're going through, God's always there. He's always right there with you, no matter what you're going through. And he told me that I am worth it. He loves me so much, and that's why he made me. It's because he loves me, and he made me in his, in his image, and he doesn't make junk. He doesn't make nothing for no no reason. So I do have a purpose, and I'm just so thankful for that. Hallelujah. Ryan, you want to testify, buddy? All right, he'll stand and testify. You want to come out here with me? You want to come, huh? He's coming out here with me. Amen. Give him a hand for that. Hallelujah. Ryan's one of those boys that's been around here a long time. He don't say a whole lot. I'm going to stand on this step where I'm a little bit taller than you that way. So he traveled with us. He, oh, he was in my room. I had a few of them in my room, and uh, I enjoyed my time with this young man. I don't have much to say, but I'm glad I serve a God that can change everyone's life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I like it. I think he's ready to go again. I sent him a text and said, I'm glad you were able to go and glad you could... You know, when you get boys in a room at 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, tell them what you'll hear from boys. And, uh, and we made a commitment that what was said in the room stayed in the room that night, that weekend. And uh, there will be no pictures of our room posted on social media anywhere. And, uh, and we got through that first night, second night pretty good. All right, Rebecca Smith, you want to stand and testify? All right, you can do it. I thank the Lord for all He's done for me and being there for me. I've been really struggling lately. Um, I haven't been able to feel Him. And the devil has been fighting me like all the other girls. That I'm not worth it. No one cares. <laughs> but I know a God... <laughs> that can deliver you and can be there for you and be your best friend. <laughs> and at CYC really helped a lot and be able to fellowship with everybody <laughs> and be able to get closer and know one another. And I really thank y'all for all y'all done and being there. I'm glad that not only did our group get to go, Spirit Life and Rebecca from Popka went with us, Dylan Road went with us, and, and I saw one of their young men just linger in the altar. Him and Seymour just lingered in the altar one night. Uh, they were probably the last round or two of folks there. And uh, just, I mean, you see teenage boys squalling and bawling, uh, and you don't see that routinely from them, you know something's happening. Amen. And I watched both of those boys' arms locked on each other, just squalling and we call it from start, call it squalling, crying. And um, I know that uh, God was doing something in their life. Amen. I can't call everybody because we'd be here all night. That'd be okay to do that, but uh, we have other things that we need to get to as well. But um, this young man went as well with us, and uh, I've said from this pulpit publicly, he's accepted the call of the ministry, and um, God's doing some things. You know who I'm talking about. God's doing things in his life, and. And, um, Caleb, I'm proud of you, buddy. I've told you that privately. Uh, those that were in my room, I told them that. The guys that went with me, I told them that. I'm proud of all of our kids. Amen? Stand and testify tonight, Caleb. Well, I want to 
I want to thank the Lord for letting me go. Uh, I've been struggling a lot with this call. It's been about a year. I actually accepted it last at CYC, and um, he's been. I've been struggling. It's been a battle being able to actually pursue this call, but um, the Lord's really helped me this year, and being able to go with all you, it's been really great to spend some time with you, and um, I just want to thank the Lord, and y'all keep, please keep praying for me to be able to accept this call and to be able to pursue it, y'all just pray for me. I'm looking forward to hearing him preach his first sermon here. Amen. Going to get him scheduled real quickly. You watch out, buddy. Nika, you ready, honey? All right. She's still shaking her head no at me. All right. I know Nika. I heard Nika all over the bus. Hallelujah. I heard her down the hallway one time. I thought, yep, Nika's here. We know Nika's here. <laughs> yeah, it was you, too. Hallelujah. Aren't you proud of all of our students tonight? Uh, Hannah Navoa went with us. Sophia went with us. I'm looking. Have I missed anybody that's here that went with? Angelique. Yeah, I saw her come in there. Titus is hiding behind the computers back there. Watch this. Titus, stand and testify, buddy. Hallelujah. Yes, they. we have pews, and they had concrete seats and fold-out chairs. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, junior ushers and usherettes, junior praise team, uh, let's come and give you an opportunity to worship the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings. Thank you for your faithfulness while they're coming. It's good to have all the home folks. Good to see Amanda tonight and her boys. Uh, Ethan and Jason and them are growing up on us. Amen. Good to have them in the house of the Lord. It hit me last night, actually, and again this morning, that in three months from today, Sister Wendy will have a 15-year-old daughter in the house. Amen. And so it just kind of all began to close in on me three months from today. So all these kids are growing up. You pray for moms and dads alike and pray for these students. And um, I know God's got some great things in store uh, for all of them tonight. All right. Y'all ready? Uh, Caleb, you've already said it publicly, son. Stand and pray for tonight's tithes and offerings. Amen. Mercer. She was on that bus too, I think, if I remember right. There was a bunch of them on that bus. Amen. And if you uh, follow me on social media, uh, I asked them, I said, please clean up the bus before you get out of it, okay? Just make it easy for the old man on Monday. And um, actually, I waited till Tuesday and had somebody else clean it out for me. Uh, but they had a bag of trash left over. It's amazing how they're, they've cleaned it. There's a bag of trash left. Amen. If you've got kids at home, you know what it's like. My room's clean, Mom, and you go in there and it ain't clean. Amen. They just cram it all under the bed. Amen. All right. Don't forget about tomorrow night. I won't see some of you after we dismiss the classes until tomorrow night. Don't forget about tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Uh, be here. We're looking for a great time in the Lord. Go ahead and dismiss all of our kids and students to classes tonight. Pastor Tim's coming to take prayer requests.
got a real good crowd even after they leave. You know, as I sit here and I think about, we're singing about the blood. But also, through His blood, it comes our healing. It says, by His stripes we are healed. And it's good to know that we have someone who cares that you can go to and know that and ask Him and know that He'll move in your on your behalf. We don't have to beg Him. We don't have to pay for it. We don't have to, you know, we just go to Him and say, God, I need that touch one more time. And do we, anyone over here have any needs? Brother Eric? Let's remember Brother Eric's family. For the Walcott's family and brothers who need Jesus. Sister Linda. Sister Linda. Sister Linda's eyes and her family. Anyone else? Sister Shannon. Sister Shannon's family and her. Sister Mary. Sister Effie May. Anyone? Let's remember Sister Walcott. Anyone else? Jerry? We'll pray and we'll agree with you. Anyone else? Anyone on this side? good. Let's remember that need as well. Anyone else? Sister? Amen. God is good. Anyone else? Also, Sister Harden as well.
just keep her in prayer. Any special unspoken requests? As I always say here lately, as we go to pray, let's agree together because we know and we believe that God is able. And when we pray, let's pray expecting to hear that God has moved in these needs. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. And we want to give you praise, first of all, for what you're going to do right now as we begin to pray and ask that you move in each one of these situations, Lord. We want to give you glory and honor for what you're going to do and what we're going to hear in advance of what we're going to hear about what you've done in each need. Lord, those of you, those who need the family touch, that I ask that you begin to move in those families, Lord. Only you know the situation, and only you know the need, and we know that you're able to move in a mighty way in those situations because you are the way maker where there's no way, and you're the peacemaker where there's no peace. And God, we know that you're able to just bring joy and, and happiness back. And Lord, and just move, Lord. And those lost loved ones who need to find you, I pray that you'll send someone their way just to bring a word of how good you are and just to share of how great you are and what you did for them and how much you love them. And God, I just pray that you'll meet each one of these needs as that were mentioned that need the healing touch. Lord, my mind, I can't recall them all, but you know all of them. Lord, and you know the need. You know the situation, and we know that you're able to move because of who you are and what you've done. You said it was by your stripes that we were healed, and we stand firm on your word and know that you said it, that we can call it done in the name of Jesus. And I believe that, and I know that i got others out here in this audience who believe that as well. And I'll call it done right now. I'll pray for Brother Maynard. Lord, you know the need there. And God, I pray that you strengthen him. Let your healing power just come right now in that room where he's at. And just strengthen him right now. Let him know that you're with him. Let him know that you know right where he's at. And let him know that you know right what he's going through, God. I pray for Sister Harden and that you'll just wrap your loving arms around her and just love on her, comfort her, give her peace in all that she's going through, God. And I just ask that you move in Donna. Debbie and De- Debbie and David right now that you move in that situation you know the need there on both behalf and we just ask that you move right now and let your healing power just flow right now and Lord we just thank you for what you're going to do we pray for Don right now too in the hip we thank you for what you've been doing with the back but now we ask that you give him a special touch in the hip Lord we know that you're able to And we stand firm and we accept and we believe that it has been done right now. And Lord, we give you the glory and honor for it. And Lord, we ask now that as we get ready to go into the the word, that you'll just open our minds and our eyes to hear and our heart to hear what you have to say to us, God. Speak to us. You know right what, what we all need to hear. And I pray that you'll anoint the speaker and let the word come that you'll have for this one to bring to us, God. And God, I just thank you for what you're going to do in advance. I thank you for what we're going to hear. And I thank you for your faithfulness and your love. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Aren't you glad we serve a God that's able to hear us tonight? Amen. Not only able to hear, but able to move on behalf of the needs of our, of our situation. He's a good God. Hallelujah. So delighted to have Pastor Shelley and Mike with us tonight. Pastor Shelley's going to be preaching. I have allowed all, most of all of our staff pastors to go through a round here. They have helped me tremendously with my load this month, and I am thankful for that. And I do want to just remind you about next Wednesday night. We will have church, and there will not be classes. We're in spring break week for Orange County next week. So there will be church, but no classes next week and no Wednesday night meals. We give our, our kitchen staff a, a break next Wednesday night. They need one from January to now is a long run. And so uh, there will be church, but no Wednesday night meals and no classes. Everybody will be in. And uh, I've, got a, um, I've asked our youth pastor to preach next Wednesday night. I thought, well, if her kids have got to be in the big church, they can hear her. Amen. So uh, she'll be uh, preaching next Wednesday night. And uh, but so delighted to have all of these. You know, we're a blessed church with singers and musicians and Folks that can fill in the pulpit. I mean, we don't have to even 
Sunday morning I was gone, and we have an associate pastor who's well able to handle a Sunday morning service, and, and I don't have to worry about it, amen? You have to get concerned sometimes bringing folks in. Um, they'll shred it up in a matter of an hour or so and take you months to put it back together, amen? And I'm glad we don't have to worry with that. And Brother Carl preached, he's just become one of us, amen? And uh, I hate that he and Rachel are getting married for one purpose. I hate it for one reason, that Rachel's moving the live oak. I don't like that part about it. I don't know if they're watching. It'll get out to them. I'm sure somebody will call and tell them I talked about them. I don't care. I'm happy for them, but I don't like the idea that she's moving to live oak. Um, would it be wrong if we prayed differently? It may be self-serving, but we might pray that way. And God, if we're wrong, change our heart. Amen. But I said that to say we've got, we've got folks connected with our church that are well able to take care of this pulpit, and I'm thankful for that. Come on now, you, we're, we were late dismissing, so uh, don't think you got to quit in ten minutes. Amen. You preach till you're done. Welcome, Pastor Shelley, tonight. You know, you, you don't think about what teens go through until you hear testimonies. You think because they're young that they're exempt from the old slew foot who gives us a fit. Amen. We need to hold our youth up. It was an awesome weekend. Michael and I followed the bus and stayed with his mom and went only to the night services because we went last year to every service, and I came back whooped. <laughs> I couldn't do it this year. And Titus was 110% right. We are blessed to have padded pews because my backside hurt from sitting on the concrete floor is what I, I thought it was. But um, we are blessed, but it was a wonderful time. But please, let's keep our, our teens and our kids up in prayer. I live with two teens, and they don't have an easy road. And you can think back to how it was when you were a youth and realize it was rough, and I believe it's even rougher now. The, the enemy knows his time is limited, and if he can get them, he can get our future church. So we have to hold them up in prayer. Well, before I read the scriptures that the Lord has laid on my heart tonight, I just want to share with you, um, Brother Chapman preached on the burning bush. And that ministered to me, that revival message that he preached to us. And then I thought, after that burning bush, we can't stay there. We have to go. But how do we do it? How do we go forward? And then Brother Carl kind of stepped a little bit on my message Sunday night when he preached that you're, you're moving in some type of motion. And if you recall, he, he was preaching on how we have to stand still and recognize sometimes we have to hear the Lord before we can move. Well, tonight, with the Lord's help, I want to talk to you about when we have that direction, what do we do to move forward? So the Lord, with the Lord's help, if you are able to stand um, for the reading of God's Word, if you have your Bibles, open up to the book of Exodus, the chapter chapter 14. And you may want to keep your Bible open there because I'm going to be bouncing around in chapter 14, 15. So chapter 14, the 13th verse. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians... Whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Right there is God telling them, Go forward. I gave you your direction, Go forward. Help me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I praise you and I thank you, God, for your word, Lord, that does give us direction. It's a lamp unto our feet. God, I thank you for a congregation that's come out on a Wednesday night to worship you. I thank you for the songs that have been sung tonight, God. Lord, we're here to uplift your name on high. Thank you, God, for being our all in all. Lord, I pray that you would just minister to us tonight. Give me clarity of mind. God, I know what you've laid on my heart. Help us to realize, God, we've got to move forward in you. We cannot stand 
stand still and be stagnant, God. We need your spirit to help us move, to guide us, God, to make a difference, to shine that light into this world, God, for the dying and the lost, God. I pray that our, our enemy would be held back by us realizing we have all power through you. God, I pray that you would just be with us, anoint us tonight to hear your word, to leave here equipped and changed, ready to serve you in a mighty way. In your precious name, we ask all of these things. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Going forward in Christ. So we heard about the burning bush and staying around there. That's not a good thing. And Brother Carl was talking about how we need to realize sometimes we have to listen for direction. But I want to pick it up from there and go on. Because after we have that direction, we need to do something with it. We can't stand still and be stagnant because if we do, we'll die spiritually. So here Moses led the people of Egypt out. I'm sorry, the Israelites out of Egypt. And they encamped by the sea. And behind them was the Egyptians coming out to kill them. And if you will read those scriptures and refresh your memory, you'll realize that when they left, the Lord said that he was going to change Pharaoh's heart. He was going to harden Pharaoh's heart. In other words, he was going to say, Pharaoh, you made a mistake. You shouldn't have let my people go. And so then the the Egyptians go after the Israelites. So here, Moses is leading them. They get by the sea, and they look back, and they realize, "Uh uh-oh, here they come after us. And so the Israelites look at Moses and say, Moses, there were no graves back in Egypt. Why did you lead us out here so that we would die? And so Moses tells them, wait a minute, be reminded that what I did, what God did in Egypt, and remember all the plagues that come on the Egyptians. The Israelites didn't have any plagues, amen, because God's hand was upon them. Don't you know that Moses wanted to take that rod and slap him over the head and say, do you realize what God has already done for you? But church, how many times has God done something for us and we should be slapped over the head and not reminded of what God has brought us out of? Notice that Egypt represents oppression, slavery, and pagan worship, and bondage. And here they're saying, why did you take us out? In modern lingo, Moses was telling the the Israelites, stay still, chill out, don't panic, and watch God, because he's got our back. Amen? God tells Moses to tell them, why are you and the people crying unto me? Tell them to go forward. Don't sit there and mully grub and complain. Go forward. So there's that instruction, church. Go forward. And sometimes, a lot of times, God tells us to go forward in some avenue of our life, and we don't do it. And why do we not do it? Because the enemy is out there busy. And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Going forward in Christ is just that. It's growing. It's seeking. It's maturing, and it's trusting with all our might in the Lord. In our society, we are such a ready-made society. We think we can go get this thing in a box and have it all pre-planned and all figured out for us. But I have news for you. The Bible is evidence that God doesn't work that way. God is a God that wants us to take that first step. Think about how Christ worked all the miracles in the Bible. The woman that had the issue of blood, Jesus didn't go to her and say, Woman, with the issue of blood, be healed today. That woman pressed through. She was going forward to that Savior because she knew he had all that she needed. She had exhausted everything, church, but she knew God had all that she needed. God has all that we need. Amen? God does not work like that. Think about David fighting Goliath. He had to commit to that fight before it even started. And if you remember right, he had put on the armor and it was too big. Remember that? And he said, I don't need this. I have all that I need because that giant's going to come down in the name of the Lord. Amen? But he had to commit to that fight. Think of the three Hebrew children. They had to commit that they were going to walk through the fire. God didn't push them through that fire, church. It took their commitment to walk through the fire. 
Think about Joseph, the times that he was rejected, sold in as a, a slave by his brothers, forgot about in prison. Joseph didn't give up on God. He committed and he said, this is happening for God's glory. This is happening because God's still in control regardless. We have to commit to this thing. We have to commit to this life. It tickled my heart, not that I might boast, but Sunday night when Cherif testified and she remembered how we taught her, admit, believe, confess. And I heard that through a Baptist church. And it, it gri gripped me because I said, that's the way we can teach our kids this thing. Admit, believe, and confess. And we added another one because there's an other C that says we have to commit. Church, we have to commit. This is a spiritual battle that we are fighting. It is a spiritual warfare that we're in because the, the enemy is like that lion seeking whom he may devour. He's not stopped, church, but Jesus is on the throne. Amen? We can call out to him and he comes to our aid. He is our provision. Daniel had to purpose and commit in his life to do right. Even when they said, if you kneel down and pray, that's it. It's death. He had to commit to the Lord and say, I'm not going to give up. If we want revival, we got to get busy. we got to move forward. Are we waiting for another church to get on fire so we can go over there and it maybe rub off? It don't work that way, church. If we want revival, we got to seek him with all we got. We got to give him all we got. We got to say this vessel take and use for your glory. If it means shouting seven times around the building, shout seven times. If it means go lay hands on somebody that's sick, go lay hands on them. Don't sit there and look at the right and the left and say, what are they doing? It's a personal relationship that I have to have, and I have to be in tune with him. Amen? If we want revival, we've got to want it. And people will do what they want. People will go where they want. People will purchase what they want. We've got to get that determined in our heart. But why do we not move forward in Jesus Christ? Why do we not move forward in the promises and the provision that he has for us? The first one fear. Fear grips us. I'm guilty. I deal in fear, but God helps me. God gives me that boldness. God gives me that love and determination that I can change it to faith. We have to change our fear into faith. If you look at verse 10, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. There's that fear. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Church, we have to realize, and reading these scriptures, you know how you read scriptures and something will jump out that was never there before in your mind? When I read these scriptures, it said that when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they went by the sea, and the mountains were on every side. And what did it say? It said the angel that was before them went behind them. Now get this. Imagine the angel that was before them making the way, leading them, went behind them. Why did that angel go behind them? Because the Word of God says it shined light over the Israelites, but it put darkness on the Egyptians. And they couldn't see one another. Church, do you get a hold of that? He makes provisions for his people. Amen? Those Israelites didn't have to worry. The power of God was right there with them. And then the next part that God revealed to me, restudying these scriptures, I've taught them in children's church. Is it said that when Moses put down the rod and the sea broke away, he held it back all night. All night. These Israelites didn't just witness a minor miracle. This was a major miracle. He held the waters back all night. I don't know how much more faith they needed. Amen? And how many times has he blessed us? And we can be in the worst situation and God bring us out and we forget. I'm guilty. I'm preaching to myself. Because God will bring me out of a situation and I'll say, God, it had to be you. There's no way I could have done it. There's no way that I could have financially did all of that. 
There's no way that my kid could recover that quick without your hand upon me. And then I get to the next hurdle and I forget what God has done for me. Church, it's not pleasing to the Lord. We have to take that fear and turn it into faith. We have a history with Jesus Christ. You can reflect on your life and remember time and time and time again how he has blessed you. Amen. But here's the Israelites and they're like, oh, woe is me. Here they come. Their eyes weren't on getting to the promised land. Their eyes were on what was behind them, the past. We got to get our eyes off the past too, church. We got to put them on getting to that promised land. Amen. Moving past it. Greater is he that is in you, me, than in he that is in the world. We have to realize we have the power. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. The next point, complaining needs to change into praise unto the Lord. Here we go again. Listen to Exodus 15:22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And then they came to Marah. They could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord shewed him a tree, which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. God proved them again. He knew that water was going to be bitter before they even got there. He knows what hurdle we're going to cross before we even get there. And we have to learn to praise Him and thank Him. God, I know you hold the answer. It might not be when I want it. It might not be right now. But I'm going to hold on to that promise and those provisions because I know they're coming. I know you're going to save my children who are lost out in the world. I know you're going to save my neighbor who I've been praying for. I know it, God, because you promised me in your word. They just, watched, they just witnessed God exhibiting all of these, His power. And here they're doubting. And it says, Exodus 15, 26. And he said, If thou wilt diligently, listen to these scriptures. This is what he's telling the Israelites you got to do. And it applies to us. And he said, If thou wilt diligently, there's that word, church, diligently, means you got to put some effort to it. Hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right. That's a hard one right there for some people in his sight. And will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Right there, they're told, you know all of those things that you just saw happen to the Egyptians? It's not going to happen to you if you hearken unto me, if you listen to me, and you do what I tell you to do. If you're righteous in my sight, I'm going to provide a way. I'm going to make provisions. Moses once again has to remind them, God is in control. You know what? God puts people in our life to remind us God is in control. And when a godly person comes to you and reminds you God is in control, take it to heart because they see what you're going through. You know, it's always hindsight. It's always 20-20. Well, that person nine times out of ten has probably been where you've been. You know, it's no secret around here, the things that we were kind of going through with our son. And it was amazing to me because I had those spiritual people in my life that love the Lord and they're coming alongside us going, it's going to be okay. And it was hard for us to see. It really was. I'm being transparent with you. But we had to realize they had been through it. And it was going to be okay because God is in control. We did the best thing. We prayed and had all of you praying. But church, we can't think that we're on a desert island and we can make it all by ourselves. You know, hearing these teens tonight proves one thing to me. Satan tries to isolate them. And if you'll notice, all of them that stood up in here had pretty much the same testimony. The devil's telling me I'm worthless. The devil's telling me I'm no good. And as a mama, I want to wrap my arms around every single one of them and say the devil's a liar. But church, they've got to figure it out themselves. And thank God we have conferences that they can get away and let their hair down and not be around all of us that they see all the time. They need it, church. But we have to realize Satan is doing his job. 
And we've got to get busy praying one for another. Because the Bible says to take each other's burdens on like they're our own and hold them close to our heart. God knew when they got out there they couldn't even drink that water. But God knows every situation that we're in now. And he knows before tomorrow comes what situation you're going to be in tomorrow. We just have to worship him and thank him. I heard years ago a preacher preach this. And it might have been Brother Chestnut, bless his heart. And he would always, when he prayed so many times, he'd say, God, thank you for what you've done in the past. Thank you for what you're doing right now. And thank you for what you're going to do in the future. That is worshiping God. That is having that faith to believe he's going to have everything under control. He's going to have that answer for you soon. You can't give up. There was provisions for the Israelites. We have to worship him. We have to move forward. You know, a lot of times you can worship through some hard stuff. We can worship through some hard stuff, church. And God is pleased with that. The next part is slipping backwards needs to change to the direction of moving forward. We cannot look back. That's where the Israelites were wrong. They look back. And they were reflecting on what they left. And they were reflecting on all of the bondage. But you know what they were really saying to Moses? Moses, if you would have just left us there, I kind of had the thing figured out. I kind of accepted all the wrong that was around me. Do you hear what they were saying? How many times do we do that? I don't want to press forward because it means I've got to change something in myself I don't want to examine myself because some of that sin feels good but we got to realize that is not going to get us to the kingdom of God no sin will enter and Egypt represented bondage and how many times are we bound with things but we're not willing to give them up because it does feel good for a season but God will say depart from me I never knew you church we've got to be washed that blood that we read about or sing about tonight, we have to be washed in the blood of the Lamb to made white as snow, forgiven. But what were they saying? I want to wallow in my sorrow. Just leave me here and let me die. I can't make it. I just don't know what to do. I don't want to, I don't want to even try anymore. Have you ever been so distraught? You just feel like sitting down and giving up? I've been there. I just don't know what to do, Lord. Yeah, you do. Start to pray. And stand still like Brother Carl was preaching about Sunday and wait for that direction. But then when he gives you that direction, get up and get gone. And don't sit there and wallow in it. You know, and so many times people... Lord, help me. We're dealing... There's some of our members here and, and they're faithful and I praise God for them. And I'm not talking about them. But we have been out visiting... And when we go knocking on doors, we've only done it a couple times. And I'm telling you, it's discouraging. It's, and God revealed something to me today. And I'm going to share it before I'm done. And we'll, we, we will go knocking on doors and introduce ourselves. You know what we get? Oh, so-and-so, that person did this to me down there. And I used to go to that church. I want to be like Moses and take the rod and smack him up against the head. But I'm not God. Because they're holding on to the past. I don't care what so-and-so did to you. I'm not so-and-so. I'm human. I'm probably going to let you down. But that ain't what this is all about. That church ain't about that pastor. That church ain't about me. That church ain't about our members that are here tonight. That church is about coming in and worshiping and leaving to serve. It's all about what I can get when I'm inside the four walls and what he can do for me. And then I leave equipped and changed, ready, energized to go out. Because it is contagious. When you get around somebody under the Spirit and they get happy, it's like sparks flying. I want to get close to them because I want some of what they got. And there's nothing wrong with that, church. But we got to stop this. So-and-so did this. So-and-so did that. That's looking back to Egypt. That's looking back to what God has brought you out of. I don't want no part of it. Let's move forward. If I've wronged you, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear nothing else about it. Let's move forward. Michael and I, we can get in spats. Hey, I just said that, didn't I? And we're on the Internet. We get in spats. And if you're sitting here and saying you don't ever get in spats, you're lying. And you're in church. But I'm the type. Let's say we're sorry. Let's mean it from our heart and move on. I don't want to be brought back up. I think God's the same way. 
I've already forgiven you. I've always already helped you come out of Egypt. Don't look back. Don't bring it up. Because when you bring it up, you just gave the enemy room to start it all over again. And girls are especially bad. I teach first graders, and I had... Yesterday, we went to recess. One's over there crying, and two's over here talking about the one that's crying. And I got all over them. They're first graders. I said, get over here. And they come over, you know, and they're scared now. And I said, I love all three of you. And they're my good girls. They are so good. And I looked at them and I said, you, you, and you are my good little girls. You're my angels in my class. Stop this nonsense. And they looked at me like, you know what's going on? And I said, I guarantee you the reason why she's over there crying is because you've told her you can't, that she can't play. And, buddy, the one, the guy, their eyes got big. I read the mail. I knew what they were doing. I said, you all three can be friends together. Don't do that. But church, adults get like that. We get our little cliques. We're guilty. We think it's just kid stuff, but we're guilty of it. You're my brother and sister in Christ, and I could have a, a zillion. It doesn't matter how many I have. The more, the merrier. Amen? And we get a hold of this, well, if I just put my heart out, I'll get stepped on again. Stay there and let me check on you in a month, in a week, a year, two years. If you're still there, you're not growing. You're dying spiritually. And that lion who's seeking whom he may devour is going to come along and get you, and then you are going to be back in Egypt. It ain't going to be no need to look back because you're going to be there. We have got to let forgiveness be forgiveness and move forward in Jesus Christ. I'm not good at physics and science. I'm not good at math. But the laws of motion are kind of common sense. So I have to think of it this way. If I am moving forward in Christ, which is that promised land that the Israelites, that that represented our promised land, moving forward to Christ, that tells me if I'm moving forward, I must be getting further and further away from the enemy, which represents that bondage in Egypt. Which way do you want to go? Because all we have to do is say, God, how do I move forward in you? How do I move forward in you? He'll reveal it. There's a substitute teacher that is sub for me many times, and she is in a Pentecostal church, and her husband, they're both in some type of outreach. I don't quite understand it. You know, Spanish people and and black people, they do things different than us Caucasians, and I, I love to go to different churches. So she came over to my room at the end of the day, and we were talking. And I felt a tug that she's wanting to step out in ministry, but hubby's kind of lingering behind. And I said, the woman at the well didn't have a man alongside her. She went. And I said, if God's calling you to go, you need to go. And I believe God put that woman there because of this message. And I shared with her the message that I had for you all tonight that God had laid on my heart. I know God put her there. I said, you step out and move forward because this is something I've realized especially going through what we've gone through recently with our son I cannot depend on Michael's relationship to get me to where I need to be in Christ I cannot depend on my kids relationship to get me where I need to be in Christ and if they fall by the wayside I still have to have a mind made up that I'm going to go forward that I'm going to keep that path that he has told me to keep And I may have to stop along that path and say, God, I need redirection. Just like Brother Carl preached about Sunday. I'm telling you, it's amazing how God works things out. Because the burning bush and then Brother Carl. And I toyed last toll last night. Should I even even preach this? You know, Michael and I were talking and the Lord confirmed it through some stuff today. But what I was going to share with you a few minutes ago, we were talking, this lady and I, today. And I said, you know, God gives us individual signs sometimes. And that sign, for me, may be completely different than you. And God, when we took on Spirit Life, when we were appointed there, many of you know that there was a pastor already appointed there for that week. And he took his family. And I hope this is okay. But then it, just, it was not the right thing for him and his family. And I even asked God, why did you put that family through that? And we had truly accepted it. I mean, we had really accepted it because we both said, if it's not God's will for us to be there, I don't want to be there because that would be misery. I'm content where he's got us, and I knew he had us here, and I said, I'm completely fine with that. And then we get the phone call, and then we're going. And it completely blew my mind. 
And right here at the altar one night, I prayed, God, why did you put that family through it? I mean, imagine. That, that was hard for that family to go through what they went through. You know, we're all happy as can be. You know, we're going. We've got a church. We're going to have this opportunity. And God's opened the door. Praise God. But then part of me was like, that poor family. But God said to me this very thing. I was teaching them something. And I was teaching you the lesson that no man opens doors. I do. And I thought, praise God. I realized that today talking to that lady. Because you know what? If man want to open that door and we got over there and heard the bitterness that we're hearing, so and so did this and the numbers are low and things aren't going that great, we'd be ready to throw in the towel. But I am reminded, I am there. My husband is there. My kids are there. We're there until God moves us. Because I don't care if it's two or five or 50 or whatever that number is that is there that we have to minister to. We're there because God put us there, church. And God puts all of us in places to minister regardless. I was listening to a radio station. It's a Christian uh, radio station. And they were preaching about when God puts you somewhere, you've got to minister there to your, your complete full being. All you got. You got to give it all you got. And they were saying, the guy was saying that, you know, people think that a pulpit ministry, that's such, that's the only ministry. You know, and a worship worship leader or a, a piano player, all those positions that you see Sunday after Sunday or service after service. And he said, we are to work for the Lord and his glory all the time, no matter where we're at. So our job nine to five is for his glory. You are to uplift his name and minister to somebody there. I guarantee you the kids that I have before they leave me in the year, I might can't say Jesus Christ saves and he's the only way to heaven, but I can show them the love of Christ and they see something different in me. And I'm not saying that to boast, but your coworker, maybe you're not allowed to profess it openly on your job. You can show them the love of Christ and love conquers all. We've got to move forward. The song, it gets sweeter. Brother uh, Roger sang it here the other night. And this song, I've sang it. You know, I love to hear it. But I've looked at this song different. And I want to share with you what God's done for me through this song. The more I trust Him, the more I love Him. Put a period there. Think about it. The more you trust Him, the more you're going to grow to love Him. Okay? We sing that kind of as one sentence, okay? But put a period there. No other clause. Put a period. The more I trust him, the more I love him. Nothing, another sentence, nothing good for me he'll deny. I don't have to do anything except for accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That's it. And then nothing good will for him, for me he'll deny. He won't deny me. I am his. I belong to him. He is mine. Nobody can take it away. His love is richer deeper, fuller, and sweeter. And then it gets sweeter and it gets sweeter as the days go by. Did that do for you what it did for me? Because if I accept him, nothing good he's going to deny for me. And if he knows, you know, if he knows me as his, he knows how to give me good gifts. And he's going to protect me. He's just like the Israelites church. He's going to give me those provisions that's going to provide for me no matter where I'm at. If I will hearken unto him. Remember that scripture? And know his voice. We've got some stuff to do. But we can move forward in Christ. And I think of the Israelites marching out of Egypt. And I didn't really know this. okay? Because you teach children for so long. I guess my little pea-sized brain gets to be very childlike sometimes but there was two million Israelites or Michael says he thinks that some research he's done is like three million okay one million two million three it's a lot of people okay it took a lot of time for them to go where they were getting I can't imagine we had 20 something getting them into Wendy's or wherever we it was a job keeping up with everybody but imagine Moses He's moving forward. Now, think about this. Here's all these Israelites. They couldn't just all be up by Moses. They had to be, it had, I don't know, I can't imagine. But it had to be in rows of people. I mean, how would you move that many people? It, it, Pastor would have been awesome at Moses' job. He would have had them probably in alphabetical order, four by four. I, I don't know. But I can't imagine. But my point is, if we are not careful... 
will get in a stagnant state. And what I mean by that is imagine you're in Egypt. Moses gives the command, move forward. The first row goes. The second row goes. The third row stops. What just happened? Go forward. Get out of here. Can you imagine how the people behind felt? Can you imagine the people in front? Because Moses probably had to say, slow down. They got slow popes back there. They got to catch up. My point is, are you stagnant? Are you affecting somebody that's around you? Are they, because we're, we're watched. Whether you want to accept it or not, you are watched. If you proclaim that you know Jesus Christ, you just put a big bullseye on you. And we're being watched. So are you stagnant and not moving forward in Christ and affecting somebody that's around you? Because it happens. I'm speaking from experience. I want a healthy household. I want my children growing. It tickles me that he calls on all of them to testify. And he thinks that they're going to have a problem with staying with one minute. But we need to realize we have to push our children. We have to encourage them. And how do we do that? Living it before them. How do we encourage that lost spouse that we're living with if you've got one of them? You've got to live it before them. Because it's contagious, church. They will watch and they will wonder what makes that commitment for you so real. I want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, Christ so real. I want to live it with such conviction that people around me know there is a difference. And that ge- difference is Jesus Christ. Amen. My relationship is the most important. I'll back up. My relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important thing that I have this side of glory. And you have to guard it. We have to guard it. Okay, I'm reminded of a crazy little children's story called Chicken Little. Who's read Chicken Little? Two weeks ago we had the story in class. And Sister Katrina's smiling ear to ear because I know this is probably a second grade story. And this, this story ministered to me. And I want to get there how it did. And the story is, the little chicken is sitting there and an acorn falls on his head. And what's he do? He jumps up and he starts yelling, the sky is falling. And he doesn't stop to investigate that it's an acorn. So he starts running around and he tells this friend. And this friend starts hollering with him, call the police, the sky is falling. So they go to another friend. And so before you know it, I don't know how many animals it is, but it's quite a few. And they're figuring out that the sky, they're thinking that the sky is falling. My point is, they didn't stop to realize it was just an acorn. And I'm not believing that to be true. The sky is not falling. But I do know this one thing. Jesus Christ is coming. And he's coming again very soon. Whether everybody's ready or not. But why did I compare that to the Chicken Little story? Chicken Little said it with such conviction, he sold it. It was so real that his friends had no choice but to believe it. Are we running around with the molly grubs looking back at Egypt and the bondage, holding on to the past? Are we being like Chicken Little, running around saying, Jesus is coming? I want to be convinced. I want to live so convinced and so much faith that I know my Savior is coming back, that it's contagious, that all people around me say, there's something about this. I've got to get ready. Because we can do it with conviction. But we have to have that relationship in order with Christ to have that conviction. We have to have such a tight relationship with Him, the enemy has no room. We have to be ready to move forward. And I've decided it's full steam ahead. I don't want to look back. If I look back, I want to look back only to reflect on where God has brought me from. That is it. I want to look back only to praise Him and thank Him. I remember, God, where I was, but I thank You for where I am today. I'm nowhere near where I need to be, but I know that I'm a work in progress. Amen. And I'm going to, I'm going to lean on You with all I got. In closing tonight, you are either you're in one of three states of motion. Now get this. Brother Carl did this Sunday night and I could I'm sitting right there and saying, Oh my mercy. God, you're confirming some stuff. And he did this and he said, You're either moving one of three ways. You're either going back, y'all remember this? Or you're going side to side. Or you're going forward. Okay? Think about it. What does going back represent? Sin. Bondage all that oppression where God has delivered you from backsliding giving up 
throw in the towel in. That's not the way God intends for us to go. He makes a way of escape in every situation. We might not seem, we may not think that there is a solution, but God has every solution. Don't go that way, church. God will take you from backsliding and He'll put you in a forward motion towards Him. But we have a job to do. He is a gentleman. We have to ask Him. And we have to believe He's going to do it. That faith. Remember that fear to faith? All right, side to side. Think about it. You're not going anywhere. You're just moving. You're not standing still, like the Word of God says when we need direction. You're just kind of wavering. Do I go this way or do I go that way? And you know the Scripture says not to be blown over by false doctrine. Every wind that blows, and that's what it kind of reminds me of. When you're going side to side, you're not making any, you're just, you're just wearing out the ground. You're wearing out the carpet. Okay? You're wearing out yourself. But if we'll say, God, if I don't know where I'm going to go, I need to stand still and listen for you. But then when I get direction, God, I've got to go forward. And then there's that way of going forward. And maybe you're here tonight and you are going forward. Praise God. You need to thank Him that you are going forward. Praise Him and worship Him that you are going forward. And then say, God, give me the momentum to keep it up. Give me the strength and the wisdom to keep it up. And then, Lord, help me get somebody else to go along with me. Help me have that conviction like Chicken Little that the sky is falling. Have me, let me have that conviction that Jesus Christ is coming again. Come along, I'll show you the way. And it is as simple as the ABCs that Cherif shared with you Sunday night. That is simple stuff. You know, people say, well, I can't influence others around me. I don't know how to pray them through the, sin, the, the sinner's prayer. Yes, you do. You were there one day. Think about what, what you did and what you said, and you meant it in your heart, church. We've got to move forward in Christ. If we're going to see great things in these end days, we've got to get busy. If somebody will come and help me, will you stand with me tonight? We are not perfect. And God knows that. But God gives us the strength to do what He's called us to do. Don't let fear grip you to the, to the point that you're not doing anything. Don't let fear make you turn back and go back to the bondage and the sin that you were once delivered from. Don't let the enemy so confuse you that you just go side to side and get nowhere. Be like Moses. And when, you know, Moses doubted, I think, in the beginning. But I think Moses come so far when he was leading those Israelites out. Imagine two million, three million, however many you want to think that he was leading. God helped him, church, move forward. God told those Israelites, go forward. He wants our people, God's people in the end times to go forward in him. Because if we're going to influence our family, if we're going to influence our communities in our neighborhood, if we're going to influence our church, because sinners come right in here with us, it is our job to show them the way. We've got to be moving forward. Because if not, they're going to look at us and say, I don't want that. You're just as much miserable, miserable as I am. We've got to want what God has for us. The provisions that he has made for us. Will you come? You're in one of those three states tonight. It's between you and God. You ain't got to tell the pastor. You ain't got to tell your mama. God knows. You know where you're at. Ask him to help you wherever you are at. Amen. Will you come and find a place to pray?
touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me.
Oh, would you sing that chorus with us one time before we leave tonight? I want to do His will tonight. Amen. I want to do Thy will, O Lord. I want to do Thy will, O Lord. Take me, break me. Mold me and make me, I want to do Thy will, O Lord. Father, thank You for the Wednesday night service tonight. Thank You, Lord, for reminding us the blood of the Lamb is still able. Thank You, Lord, for reminding us You've called us to move forward in You. Thank You, Lord, that You're still God on a Wednesday night in Central Florida. I pray that You'll go with us now. Lead us and guide us through all that we do tonight and tomorrow. Bring us back tomorrow night. Lord, for this special service, God, let us come with a mind to worship, mind to praise you, and we'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we ask, and everybody said amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't forget about tomorrow night, 7 o'clock in the house of the Lord. Please be with us. Looking for a great time. And uh, invite somebody to be with you. God bless you. You are dismissed tonight.